the word apoptosis is derived from two words. The first is apo, that means off, and the second is tosis, that means fall, and that is the same tosis that describes a droopy eyelid. So apoptosis is when a cell falls off or falls out. And it also explains why apoptosis is pronounced apoptosis and not apoptosis. And in the most simple terms, apoptosis is a form of regulated single cell death. But there is a lot more to it than a single dead cell. What happens is the cell is carefully and deliberately dismantled, allowing it to be broken down into membrane-covered pieces, these are known as apoptotic bodies, and these fragments are rapidly phagocytosed, and this way no harmful intracellular products are released, leaving adjacent cells unaffected and undamaged. Apoptosis plays a key role in embryological development, where programmed cell death allows the development and differentiation of the embryo. Later on, apoptosis is essential in physiological control of proliferating cells and immune surveillance. Apoptosis, of course, also plays a role in damaged or diseased tissues. Apoptosis plays a number of roles in embryology, for example, removal of redundant embryological structures such as the uracus. It allows tissues and organs to differentiate, for example, the male and female sex organs under hormonal control. And finally, if it wasn't for apoptosis, our fingers and toes would still be webbed. In fact, we'd just be a ball of undifferentiated tissue. One good example of hormone-controlled apoptosis is the breakdown of endometrium during the menstrual cycle. Apoptosis regulates continuously proliferating cell populations in tissues such as the epithelium of gland crypts in the intestine, and apoptosis plays an essential role in immune surveillance, for example destruction of damaged and infected cells. Apoptosis comes into play when tissues are damaged or diseased. So cells injured through heat, radiation and the hypoxia stimulate apoptosis, as do virus-infected cells. The growth of rapidly proliferating tumours, for example high-grade lymphomas, are kept in check to a degree by apoptosis. But if apoptosis is decreased, in a tumour, then this, of course, can lead to uninhibited tumour growth. Problems caused by autoimmune diseases and other conditions such as graft-versus-host disease may be as a result of apoptosis. Morphologically, apoptosis is characterised by shrinkage of the cell, the chromatin fragments and condenses under the nuclear membrane, there are cytoplasmic blebs and apoptotic bodies form these membrane-covered fragments are then phagocytosed, and because the membranes keep these pieces intact without leakage of cell contents, there is no inflammatory response. This is a good example of apoptosis in a liver affected by viral hepatitis. We are zooming into an eosinophil body or councilman body. This is an apoptotic cell. The picture actually very well demonstrates the true meaning of apoptosis, that is falling off, and this shrunken cell remnant does really appear to be falling out of the liver. This is a section of lymph node from a patient with high-grade B-cell lymphoma, and you can see multiple apoptotic bodies, and these are the scattered dark specks lying amongst the tumour cells. This is a section of another high-grade lymphoma, and this is Burkitt lymphoma. One of the characteristic histological features of Burkitt lymphoma is the so-called starry sky appearance. The stars in the starry sky are caused by apoptosis, and the 
hepatotic bodies are phagocytosed by macrophages. These are sometimes called tingible body macrophages because they contain stainable fragments. The mechanism of apoptosis is quite complex and there are two main pathways. The first is the extrinsic or death receptor pathway. Here special receptors on the cell surface called death receptors are activated by external molecular signals that tell the cell to die. The intrinsic or mitochondrial pathway occurs in cells that are faulty or when there are no survival signals. Before we go into more detail about the intrinsic and the extrinsic pathways, it's worth looking at some key molecules involved in apoptosis. BCL2 and BCLX inhibit apoptosis, BAX and BAC stimulate apoptosis, and P53 also stimulates apoptosis. Starting off with the intrinsic pathway, BCL2 and BCLX are inhibited. This allows BAX and BAC protein to be produced. They damage the mitochondrial membrane, causing it to leak cytochrome C into the cytoplasm. This binds to apoptosis activating factor or APAF1, and this activates the caspase cascade. Caspase is an enzyme that breaks down cellular structures, but at the beginning of the cascade, it starts off as a catalyst, resulting in more caspase being formed. In the extrinsic pathway, a frequent cell involved is the T lymphocyte. Here, the FAS ligand or FAS L on the T cell binds to the FAS receptors on the target cell to which FAS associated death domain or FAD attaches. This mediates the whole process, allowing activation of the caspase cascade. 